you get up here to the top, you've got something called the Order of Knights Templars. Okay, and there again, you've got the Red Cross, Order of the Temple. And over here, you'll see this cross. Okay, now watch this. You've got this cross here. Okay, now what? Here it is again. The Knights of Malta Cross. Here it is on the Masters of the Universe. Mm -hmm. Masters of the Universe. Do they have all the, uh, do they dedicate an order for, for Dimele after he died? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Jacques de Malay, when he was put to death in the 15th century, they made an order for young boys. They was called the de Malays. Okay, somebody mentioned to me, and I was talking about three weeks ago, and they said that uh, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and the son of Sam, their parents were involved with the de Malay school. I mean, they were part of that order. Yeah, well, it wouldn't surprise me none. All them crazy uh, members of it. <laughs> So is that supposed to be a Freemason uh, order? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's for young boys. Okay. Just for young boys. It's called de Malay. Now here it is again. Use our Masters of the Universe. Now, it's also, here it is again. Okay. It's also used for the LA, Los Angeles Fire Department uses it. Fascism. In most cases, fascists have come to power after a nation has suffered an economic collapse, a military defeat, or some other, uh, some other disaster. The fascist party wins mass support by promising to revive the economy and restore national pride. We're talking about fascism. Now watch. Fascism is severely limited under, personal liberty is severely limited under a fascist government. The government also controls newspapers, radios, and other means of communication. In its country, it issues propaganda to promote its policies. Opposition may lead to imprisonment, torture, or death. Here is a fasci. Here's the French Grand Orient Temple Masons dancing around the Maypole, and that is a fasci. Fascism. Fascism was an authoritarian political movement developed in Italy and several other European countries in 1919. Fascism. Its name was derived from the fasces, a ancient Roman symbol of authority consisting of a bundle of rods and an axe. So the fascism comes from the name comes from this derived from the fasces which is an ancient Roman symbol of authority consisting of a bundle of rods and an axe. There it is, the bundle of rods and an axe. Here it is on American coins, a bundle of rods with the axe. See it? Here it is on American coins. Here it is on the back of the dime, the mercury head dime. Here it is in Congress. Oh, right there. See it right here? What is that? On both sides of the president. So when the president standing here talking, there is the fascists. So if you think that this country is a fascist, racist country, that's because it is a fascist, racist country. About damn time you woke up and found out. <laughs> Well, these people act like a bunch of fascists. That's because they are. See it? They just do what comes natural. That's right. Another characteristic of a fascist government is that they are controlled by corporations. That's it. That's a very important point. That's a very important point. There it is again. See it? Over here with this symbol here too. There it is, the fasci. So that's why you and also the United States Senate. Here's the U.S. Senate. And what do you see down here? And, and you wonder why they serve the corporations. So. <laughs> 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 
Even the playing cards has the fascists. Now we got the uh, 13, there are 13 leaves, and there are 13 berries in the 13 leaves. No, 13 arrows, 13 stripes, there are 13 stars. 13 stars make up the Star of David, Shield of Solomon. Yeah, 13. I haven't counted them, but I was told that one wing has 32 degrees and the other has 33 feathers, 32 and 33. <clears throat> then you have the Anuit Coeptus, which simply means our enterprise is now a success. Mm -hmm. Anuit Coeptus, our enterprise is crowned with success. And then you say, what enterprise is crowned with success? Novas Ordo Ciclorum. Novas is novice, meaning new. Ordo is obviously order. And seclorium comes from the word, we get our word secular, meaning worldly. Secular job, secular education. Secular means of the world. The new order of the world. Our enterprise is now a success. That was put on there in 1933. When Roosevelt came out and said, we got a new deal. Now, the, the deal before was that you were an American and you were free. Now, we got a new deal. The new deal is that we just bought you. You understand? We bought you for a price. So, consequently, we now have the new deal. Our enterprise is now a success. What about this new covenant? Yeah, the new covenant. That, that has to do with this thing right here. And on the bottom of the pyramid, you'll see MDCC Alex XVI standing for 1776. There are 13 layers on the pyramid. Everything is done in sequence of 13 because of Jesus and the 12. Jesus and the 12? Jesus and his 12. Disciples. The 12 disciples plus the master makes 13. That's why 13 is an unlucky number for you. Because <laughs> that's, that's a number that's used by the Illuminati. The twelve apostles plus the master makes thirteen. Thirteen is the unlucky number because it has to do with a very high form of occult magic and you don't need to know nothing about it. So don't even use thirteen. It's unlucky for you. That's a number only the masters know and understand. So that's why thirteen is unlucky. Now here is something interesting you probably have never seen ever. Have you seen this one before? Okay. Have you ever seen this on a dollar bill? See this little guy right here? Yeah. See the cross behind the one? See the cross behind the one? Huh? See the cross behind the one? You can barely make it out because it's got other lines in it. Right here. See, they add this into it. Oh, yeah. This yeah. Right wall. Oh, I guess. Like, you can see it. It's right yeah. behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Anyway, this little guy right here. Here he is. That's a guy. Oh, no, it's an owl. A little owl. It's a symbol of the Bohemian Society. What is there any relationship between that and Woods Owl? You remember that became the mascot for the whole conservation effort of some Woods Owl? And then they started taking up the land and all? Wouldn't surprise me none. It sure makes sense to me. Has that, has that always been there? Or, no. Or they just put it no, there no. about three or four years ago? No, 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 no. They put it there about, uh, I think about 20, 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. There's, um, that's uh, Albert Pike, yeah, Albert Pike, the Grand Master of World Freemasonry. Yeah. He was thinking to himself, boy, if you chumps knew half of the crap that we're doing, <laughs> if you chumps ever found out what we were doing, you'd be real big time, be big time un <laughs> disappointed. 
Yeah, I've been on mushrooms for 41 years. <laughs> Here's what Rockefeller wrote. Rockefeller wrote this. Rockefeller wrote this in something called the Occasional Letter Number One. He said, in our dreams we have limited resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present education conventions fade in our minds and unhampered by tradition, we work our own good will upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. Yeah, we got unlimited resources and people just love to do what we tell them. Another, uh, another name for rural is even. This is interesting to me. The preface for the book, Brave New World. And in the preface for the book, Brave New World, back in 1948, the 1948 edition, we're talking about back in 1948, they, this was said, quote, as political and economic freedom diminishes, as the political and economic freedom diminishes, sexual freedom tends compensatingly to increase. And the dictator will do well to encourage that freedom in conjunction with the freedom to daydream under the influence of dope, the movies, and radio. It will help to reconcile his subjects to the servitude which is now their fate. What is that in? That's the, that was the pre preface to, the preface to uh, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, by, uh, by Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. You can still get that? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and this is the, the preface to it in 1948. So he's saying that the dictator will make sure you have plenty of narcotics, alcohol, sex, entertainment, basketball, ping pong ball, football, baseball, any ball, as long as you have a ball game, right? And a lot of sex, drugs, rock and roll, <laughs> and whatever else it is you need to keep you occupied while we do a number on you and take away your political and economic freedom. Who's the author? Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley. H-U-X-L-E-Y. Uh, Aldous Huxley. It's a very famous book. All you need to do is just remember Brave New World. It's very famous. Like, uh, yeah, mm -hmm, absolutely. <laughs> right. <clears throat> this is the one I'm going to conclude on. I could go on all night, but I'm not going to. This is the one we're going to conclude on. Here is from the California Legislature, 1953, regular session. Now this is back in 1953, published by the Senate of the State of California. That's the 11th report, the Senate Investigating Committee on Education, Education in the State of California, published by the Senate. <clears throat> It says, um, I can't, wait a minute. I thought I had a better, well anyway. It says, so-called modern communism is apparently the same hypocritical and deadly world conspiracy to destroy civilization that was founded by the secret order of the Illuminati in Bavaria, May 1st, 1776. May Day. May Day. Hmm. The world revolution conspiracy appears to have been so well organized as to be ever continuing and ever on the alert to take advantage of every opportunity presenting itself or that the conspirators could create. So in other words, these guys at the top, they will take advantage of anything. If you get a black guy run over a white guy, they'll send somebody in, make something out of it. That was, that was planned, that was purpose. He did that purpose and caused this division. And Malcolm X's daughter 
daughter's trial, or I think a court date, is right. May the 1st. Mm -hmm. Right, good. Mm -hmm. Is there symbolism there or what? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Well, now tell me if they ain't going to use that. I think so. They're going to use that. No matter what happens, they're going to use that one. So that's supposed to be a signal to the other people to let them know what's going on? Yeah, mm -hmm. so May 1st. Oh, yeah, May 1st is a, is, a, is a, well, I'll show it to you. Anyway, it is significant in this connection that as early as 1783, when unsettled conditions and dissatisfaction in some quarters had arisen in the American colonies, a subversive anonymous sermons were circulated among the colonial army to incite uh, dissatisfaction yeah. and rebellion. George Washington immediately, we're talking 1783, George Washington, immediately called the army together and in addressing them, he used this significant language, quote, now this is taken from Marshall's Life on Washington, page 86, 87. George Washington, 1783, said, quote, my God, what can this writer have in view by recommending such measures? Can he be a friend to the army? Can he be a friend to this country? Rather, is he not an insidious foe, some emissary perhaps from New York? Back in 1783, George Washington knew where the trouble was. Who are they talking about now? I don't know. <laughs> but he knew that whatever it is is happening, better check in New York, because that's where the that's stuff where is. That's where it's coming from. And then the Senate of the state of California goes on to say, it is plain that Washington believed the then center of this secret conspiracy, so far as this country was concerned, to be located in New York, and felt that it would be his duty to make such a direct statement. So you're yeah. saying that all this stuff is coming out of New York? Yeah, New York. All this crop's coming out of New York, the Empire State. Remember? The Empire Strikes Back. Star Wars. By the, the Jews? Mm-hmm. That's it. Did they have anything to do with the Civil War? Oh, of course Big they did. Time. Big time. And you think the, the slaves were freed, and, and uh, you think the slaves were freed after the Civil War? Don't bet on it. Slaves were made 14th Amendment citizens. 14th Amendment citizens are not citizens. Colored people. That's right. Negroes. Mm -hmm. No, colored people. Negroes make one home by another. It is not it is recognized that May first as the the recognition of May first, seventeen seventy six, as the founding date of the World Revolution conspiracy is not difficult to understand when it is realized that May Day is frequently celebrated even in recent times by rioting and bloodshed on a worldwide scale. That's why in Russia and China, Communist China and Soviet Union and all communist countries, they always have the big celebrations and parties on May Day because it has to do with the Maypole. The Maypole is the male resurrection, the male erection. It's the male, the male symbolism, and it has to do with revolution. The book, Fire in the Minds of Men, it, the, this book traces the course of the revolutionary fate from its earliest origin in occult Freemasonry to the allegedly scientific Marxism of today. So, Fire in the Minds of Men. We've got a little more, but I'm going to stop for tonight. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit. So all of this is saying is that we better wake up. We don't have much time. And we don't have much time. How can we go about getting that copy?